Okay, thank you uh, everybody for participating in the webinar. Uh, we're going to get started. And one thing I'd, I'd like, if you guys could mute your phones, that would be terrific, and then we won't have any, uh, any noise during the presentation. Um, So today uh, we're going to talk about the app and all um, everything that uh, we did as a company before we developed the app and some of the reasons behind the app. Um, I'll do the introduction. I'm the uh, I'm Mark Jorgensen, senior marketing manager. And then when I'm done with the introduction, I'll pass it on to Drew Stratton, our senior applications engineer. Hello. So most of you probably know about our preset and preset plus hubs. Um, preset was introduced in uh, 1995, uh, and it picked, quickly became popular with the truck OEMs, and then uh, Preset Plus was introduced in 2012, uh, that uh, had advancement over Preset. So if you consider since 2001, uh, Preset or Preset Plus was uh, standard on all the major OEMs there, and that adds up to a crazy amount of 20 million hubs. Uh, that were sold over that time period. And now uh, Preset and or Preset Plus is standard or an option at most trailer OEMs, and you can see the list of nameplates there. So based on all these hubs that are out there, uh, it provides an opportunity for a 2 million hubs to be replaced annually. So this is a huge opportunity, and, and that's why we're, uh, we're providing these tools to our customers in order to uh, sell a Preset aftermarket hubs as replacement hubs for the, the standard equipment that came on the vehicle. So what we did uh, when we introduced our uh, aftermarket uh, program was to look at all of the part numbers that are out there uh, at the production level. And as you can see from the, uh, from the screen there, all of those part numbers are production numbers and we developed our aftermarket hubs so that they could replace all these large numbers of part numbers. So the, all those filter down to one hub in the aftermarket that's needed to replace any of those numbers. And so that's a manual process we did, took a lot of time, but then we um, turned that effort into our app so that it could be done uh, electronically for easy lookups. And what this means is that you truly have an all makes product when you talk about these aftermarket hubs. They're replacing just about every hub on every truck that uh, needs service. So the Comet app is available in a variety of locations. You can go to the Android Play Store and search Comet Aftermarket, or the uh, App Store, again, search Comet Aftermarket, and then you can also use it on, the, on your desktop. Just go to conmed.com slash app, and as you can see on the screen, you'll have, uh, there's a red box uh, where you just click on it and you go right to the, uh, the app. As you can see right there, the arrow points to that red box. It'll take you right to the app. So I'm going to turn over to Drew here, and he's going to take you uh, through the app and show some of the new features that are available as, as was outlined in the Comet Connection. And then we, when he's done, uh, we'll open up to some Q&A, and then I'll just have a closing. Come up here shortly. Okay, I will go straight to the app. There we go. I'll pass it over to Drew. All right, thanks, Mark. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for calling in today. Uh, obviously, you took the link out of this from our Comet Connection, so we appreciate you following that. And that outlined a few of the updates we've added recently. Uh, if you're familiar with the app and you use it, thank you again. If it's new to you, I'm gonna just quickly go over some of the, the features we've had for a, a little while now. It's made it so powerful and useful. And then we'll talk about the new, new drum and rotor crosses that we've added recently that were highlighted in that comment connection. So, as Mark said, a, a primary component of uh, Conmet's aftermarket uh, product line is consolidation of all of our OE numbers down to all mix numbers. 
And getting those crosses is what the, the app is all about. So the first, first tool you can see here, we've got on this main launch page, hubs, hub components, which is bearings, seals, ABS rings, all that stuff, drums, and then rotors. So the, the primary use for this uh, it would be hub crosses, hub searches. So we come in here, and you've got three options in here. If you know the hub assembly number, either a comment assembly number, a OE customer part number, say a Daimler, Navistar, um, Ford, any of those numbers, if we've ever made that hub or have a cross, you can enter it in here. If you don't know the assembly number, you can click on this button and it will give you some information on how to find it. And then lastly, we have a functional lookup down here for when you just aren't sure of the number or you need to find a cross for something else. So I'll go through each of these and I'll start off with if you know an assembly number. So uh, I think obviously comment crosses can be entered in here. That's, that's pretty easy, but one of the more useful tools is if we were to type in a competitor cross for a common iron drum hub, you can type in these and you see options here for different stud lengths if you're familiar with web numbers. With or without ABS, we crossed all of these because our OMEG hubs are designed to cover the most amount of variation in the field as possible. So I'll come in here and pick a short stud with ABS and it returns back two hub options. We've got both a preset and a conventional hub option available for that uh, iron TN hub. And you can see if you scroll down here, we have a list of the benefits of preset. If you're familiar with the aftermarket preset versus hub cup studs, obviously they come loaded with bearings, a spacer, a seal, and then you also get an extended warranty, reduced service time, uh, a simpler process for install and then obviously less liability because we're installing the, the cups and the cones and the bearings and then it's a much easier installation process. So you're probably all familiar with preset and the benefits of that. And then down here, obviously all of our aftermarket preset hubs are compatible with our preset plus spindle nuts. And as an option, you can add that in with the, with the preset hub and get the benefits of Preset Plus. So that spindle nut is listed down here at the bottom for all of the preset hubs. If we keep moving down here, you can click on Details, and it gives you details of, each of the hub that has been selected. You can confirm that that's what you're actually looking for. This is a drum type brake. You have bearing set 431 and 427. It's a TN iron trailer hub. Moving down, we can confirm our stud standout for, and this is specifically short stud for steel wheels and a 52 and a half pound weight. We also offer an aluminum hub for this that if you wanted that option, you could search for that through the functional search. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, if a replacement hub is not available and a rebuild kit is needed immediately, that's listed down here. And you can click this little arrow here and it drops it down and tells you the components included in that rebuild kit. And these are specific to that particular axle. So rebuild kits have inner and outer bearing sets and a seal and spacer kit included. Everything you need to do that. Okay. So if I go home again, come back into hubs. Now, what if I don't know an assembly number to type in there? I don't have a competitor number, I got a hub on my desk, and I just don't know what that is. We can click here, and there's a video here that'll help you figure out where that number would be found on a Comet hub. There's also, you can click here and read some literature about it, or you can contact a customer service. And finally, if you don't know what it is, you can click this link, and it'll take you directly to our functional search. I'm gonna just go back so that we all follow the same thread here, but this link takes you back to the same place, which is right here. So here I'm still under the hub search section. No proceed without the number. That's what we consider our functional search tool. So we, we try to limit the amount of dimensions that are required to find a hub, and we try to base it more on application because we know what trucks used what applications. We break it down by OE and axle and actual 
configuration information that you're more likely to understand or to know about that particular part. So you first you figure out what you're looking for. Is it a truck hub, trailer hub with drum brakes, disc brakes, or trailer with disc brakes? So I'm going to kick off one here that's a little bit more complicated, but definitely coming up more often, which would be tractor with disc brakes. And here you can see we've got all the major truck OEs listed. I'm going to go with a Freightliner. And then here you have an option of the different axles and, uh, that we've ever offered a hub to Freightliner for as a truck air disc brake. So these are all filtered according to the path that you're following down. So if you picked a different path, there might be different axles in here. They, we only show ones that actually have options that are available. So I'll come down here. I'm going to pick an R drive. And for the case of this, it doesn't really matter which studs we pick. I'm going to go aluminum wheels. And then I always like aluminum hubs. In this case, we have both a flat rotor option and a U-rotor option. So this should be pretty obvious by looking at the hub. Um, I'm going to go with the U-rotor because that's been the common rotor use at Freightliner for quite a while now. And with all the selections we've made, it brings me down to one option, which is here, 1008322. And this is a complete preset hub and rotor assembly, ready to go. You can add in the spindle nut, so then you would receive the hub with the rotor, ABS ring, everything all installed take it out of the box, put the nut in it, and slide it right on the spindle. Again, we can come into here to details. We can check everything is what we're looking for, aluminum, R drive, these are the bearings. If you need to know the replacement rotor kit, that's listed in here. Stud stand out for aluminum wheels, the flange offset, which we account for that when you choose the OE and the other application data, but it's just in here as a reference. And then the weight, if you were looking um, between aluminum and iron options or whatever you might be considering there, is listed here. And then again, rebuild kit information down here at the bottom. So we try to offer everything you'd need to, to make a good decision on the best solution for that particular, particular application. Okay? So coming on down, the next item on our list here is hub components. Uh, this search works very much like the assembly search for a full hub. I can come in here, I can type in a number, 0082217. And sometimes with your internet, it can take a little bit to pull this in because we're pulling in from a lot of data. I'll pick this, call it an aftermarket hub. And in here, I get service and reboot kits listed. So we've got the same reboot kit that we saw with the complete hub assembly. And then you can also choose individual seal and spacer kit and the preset plus spindle nut. And we even have the socket size listed under here so that you make sure that the tech knows what size socket you should be using to install that. Further down, we have hub specific information. This is tying to that specific assembly number. So the wheel stud used, the axle stud, so plug, bearing set, seal, and ABS ring are all listed here. So that information is available for any OE number we've got loaded in our system, any um, OEM truck number, so a Freightliner number if they have a CM100822, uh, whatever the comment number might be, that would that would show up at listed here as well. Okay. And then next, I'm going to move into really what our combat connection was focused on are the updates with the brake drum and brake rotor cross-references. Oh, actually, before I move on, I want to show quickly here bearing and cross-reference and seal cross-references. We've recently updated these to, on the bearing cross-reference, you can see you click it and it pops you out into this nice little PDF. Um, we recently added rebuild kit listing in here with the bearings. Um, so if somebody's looking for bearings, but they decide they need a seal, obviously if you're changing bearings, we recommend always changing the seal. You can get that with the rebuild kit here directly. And then coming down here, similar situation for the seal cross-reference. 
we've added in the seal and spacer kit here. So if somebody's working on a preset and they're changing out a seal and they decide they need a spacer, that kit's here as well. So those two documents, they can be found on the regularcomment.com literature page or we've made them available right here directly from the app. Okay. So moving back to break drums, what we really tried to do here was build these tools to be very similar to the hub searches. So if you get used to using the hub search, the drums and rotors should be really similar. So again, we can start off with typing in a part number. I'm going to start with a, a competitor number, Gunite 3807X. Happens to be a, a heavy duty drum. A 16 and a half by 8 and 5 eighths, a big drive or trailer drum. And we offer two different hubs for this. We got a 12097, <clears throat> which is our premium fully machined true turn drum. We also offer a 1003730, which is a fully cast, <clears throat> excuse me, severe service drum. And you can compare the two down here by their weights. So the the true turn drum is a pretty standard 121 pound true turn, whereas the <coughs> air service drum is an additional 13 pounds um, for those heavy duty high heat applications. And then down here below the bottom is a quick little description of true turn versus a standard cast drum uh, to remind you of those differences. And then both these drums, because they're drive and trailer, both heat nuts, not uh, compatibility is not a big concern, but it's listed here uh, for these. So on steer drums, that's definitely a good thing to take or pay attention to. See details. You get a layout of the hub with the critical dimensions, similar to other crosses you've seen. All those dimensions are laid out here: 16 and a half inch diameter, 8 and 5 eighths shoe width, standard 8.78 pilot diameter all the dimensions you should need to confirm a cross for an application you're, you're working on. Um, and then down at the bottom here we have some notes about replacing steel jacketed drums and ensuring that the studs, the stud lengths on the hub you're replacing, if you are replacing those with a cast drum, are, are long enough because the quarter inch flange and steel jacketed drum can lead, your, lead to short studs if you're switching to a cast true turn or conventional drum. Okay, so then now I'm going to go back and I want to go all the way back to the brake drum module and I'm going to do our functional search for this, no proceed without the number. And in here, similar to hubs, we have um, drive, steer, and trailer sections. And for point of interest, I'm going to go with steer, 15 by 4, pretty common aftermarket drum. Freightliner, we have a 10 hole here. And then that brings up our true turn, 1000-9920. And you can see down here, this, is, this drum is ball seat nut compatible, so the hole sizes are um, large enough to accommodate ball seat nut in the front. It's a true turn, turn to balance drum. And when you click details, you see the layout is for the steer drum there, all the same information we saw before, the weights, and then at the bottom, if there were other comet crosses, those would show up at the bottom, other crosses available. All right. So I think that shows most of what the drum drum module does. I think, I mean, that, that's pretty much all you, you'd need to use it for. So we'll move on to rotors. Um, and obviously these are definitely picking up popular in the aftermarket <clears throat> and can be pretty complex to, to figure out with different offsets and sizes and all that. So we tried to simplify the tool as much as we can to accommodate all those differences. I'm going to start off here with a competitor cross. Again, we can type in um, a number, E6175 is a common medium duty hat rotor seen in the industry. And that brings up, we list both the part number of the actual rotor, but then also the kit. So the kit number is what you want to order. It includes the rotor, fasteners, ABS ring if required, and instructions all, you know, all in the box. So 
We list the rotor number in case somebody has, brings a rotor in, that's the number they're going to see on the part. But if you type it in, this will give you the kit number that you would want to order. Under details, similar to drums, you have a, a diagram of the rotor with all the critical dimensions. You can trace those down here, number of bolt holes. Pretty straightforward. Try to keep it nice and simple, not too confusing. If I go back home, back here in the rotors, now I'm going to do the functional search. Same with the drums. We've got choose your axle position. In this case, I'm going to choose a drive. Then we've got a couple of different options for flat, hat section, or U section. In this case, I'm going to choose flat. And on some of these, because the same rotors get used across multiple OEs uh, and in different applications, we can't narrow down by application criteria as far as we can with hubs. So some dimensions are needed. You might need to throw a pair of calipers or something on, on the rotor to get a measurement and narrow these down. So in this case, I'm going to choose a pretty common drive rotor uh, that I think generally used on Meritor brakes, 434. And that will give us our rotor replacement kit, similar as we saw before. 41218, this is 34621 drive axle rotor. Details, different diagram for the flat rotor. You can see on the overall length of that, it's very thin, flat rotor. All the information can be found in here to confirm. So that pretty much wraps up um, the key cross-reference tools and component search tools of the app. There's other features built in here up in what we call the hamburger, up here in this menu up here. If you click that, you can drop it down. And there's hyperlinks to contact ConNet, visit the main website. There's a, link, a quick link here to literature if you're looking for service literature, uh, service manuals, ConNet connections, technical bulletins, all that stuff can be found there. We'll also have a disclaimer if you need to review that. And then hub training, which is getting uh, a lot of updates lately. So that's definitely something to look into. If you want to get some further service training, you can click on that link and take a look at that. And then the last thing here I want to take a quick look at is called the replace calculator. And this is a tool if a customer is considering rebuilding a hub or if they want to just replace a hub. And obviously, Comet feels that it's not sufficient to generally replace the hub, but this calculator is here to figure out what is the best solution for the customer with their inputs. So we can come in here and take whatever wheel position they're working on. We can look at a TN trailer. Say it's going to be an iron hub. So I'm just picking these uh, as an example. Everybody's case will be a little bit different. Who services the vehicle? Say a service shop. And we can type in the specific seal cost that they're looking at. Throw in $30 there, a bearing cost of $80. <clears throat> and then what is an alternative to the, the component cost? What would a replacement hub cost? And we'll throw $225 in there for just a general number. Labor cost per hour, see anywhere from $75 to $90 an hour. I'll put $75 in here to keep it keep it conservative. Uh, downtime cost per hour. This is obviously varies quite a bit by fleet and what they think uh, their downtime is or if they even track it. Through our market analysis, we've got um, some suggested numbers here, values here for different, uh, rep, different vocations. So again, keep it on the conservative side. I'll keep it lower on the $75 an hour. And then come down here and hit calculate. And it gives us the results here. And if you account for the total cost to replace or rebuild that, that hub, including downtime and labor, the total cost to replace is $375, whereas rebuild is $560. Your parts cost is lower, but your total cost is higher. And I guess I didn't discuss it, but we have also got um, pre-entered, and it's editable if you if you feel like you need to change it. But we have three hours to rebuild a hub, 
and adjust it and install it versus one hour to just replace it. And that can actually be, I'll come back and show, that can be edited here. So we pre-populate those just because that's the most common data we've found, but you can update those if you feel the need. <clears throat> so obviously with replace, you have the same, a lot of similar benefits as preset with maximizing uptime, extending your warranty, simplified process, all that. But so not to, not to sound too salesy here, this is just a tool that can be used to show, to help decide what's going to be the best direction for, for each particular application. So um, with that, I think that's pretty much the walkthrough I have for the app. Okay, just uh, in, in uh, closing, we'll give an opportunity for you guys to ask uh, any questions. Um, feel free to, to chime in on anything you, uh, any comment or question you have. And remember, you might want to unmute your phone if you need to. Sorry if I went through that a little fast. If anybody wants any more detail on something or a different scenario you want me to try and walk through, go ahead and give a shout out or... Well, what you can also do, uh, um, and I want to let you know that if you have any questions, comments, or you want to know more, uh, you can contact me at uh, marketing at conmet.com. Uh, that uh, you can, any questions you have, we can answer, whether it's on the app or on product or anything having to do with ConMet. So it looks like if there's no questions, I just want to close by saying that uh, uh, the huge opportunity there is in the aftermarket with uh, our hubs in, as a replacement um, and our, any of our components as a, for rebuild. And um, also this tool here, this, this app is, is very popular and and everybody seems to, to be uh, happy with its performance. And, and we will continue to add uh, features and benefits uh, as we go forward. And any feedback you have for us would be great. We listen and, and we make changes accordingly. Uh, so I also want to thank your time for uh, attending the webinar. And um, hope you have a good day. Thank you.